so it seems that Death Watch are going to be able to field every Space Marine unit from the new Indomitus box. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy Focus 40k channel, where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today we're here to talk about Death Watch in 9th edition, both its recent news, and also some of the ways that 9th edition in general is going to impact on the Xenos Hunters. So of course the big news today is that Games Workshop in a Warhammer community article have confirmed that Death Watch will gain access to all the Space Marine units in the new Indomitus set. For an army such as the Death Watch, who really haven't seen all that many new options since the start of 8th edition, it's really quite helpful to have a whole swath of new units just inducted into the codex like this. It completely remains to be seen what's going to be optimal for the Death Watch going forward, but I think it's hard to deny that more options are almost certainly going to make the army stronger. Now they haven't said exactly how they're going to be doing this yet, they have stated the Death Watch are set for a fairly early update in 9th edition, so this could mean either an extensive day 1 FAQ for the codex, or a codex very early in 9th. Between gaining a ton of new units, and also a few of the hints that Games Workshop have dropped in some of their live streams, I think they were actually odds on for Death Watch Codex fairly early in 9th edition, but of course that's completely not confirmed at this point. I think it would certainly make a lot of sense, particularly seeing as Death Watch didn't really get any massive updates in their Psychic Awakening, basically the addition of combat doctrines and space marine stratagems that other chapters already have access to. I think their relative neglect in the Psychic Awakening series really could be an indication that they are set to come sooner rather than later, though this is of course all theory at this point. I'll be interested to see whether or not the new units such as the Outriders, Bladeguard Veterans and Eradicators might be able to be included in some way in a Death Watch Primaris kill team, or whether they're literally just going to be the individual units throughout the Codex. At the moment, pretty much any of the units that you can take throughout the Death Watch Codex can also be taken in the actual kill teams, whether that's your standard veteran kill team or the Primaris kill team, which just through precedence might mean that we could have a very mixed kill team on our hands. It could be pretty handy to have Bladeguard Veterans, tank high AP wounds on storm shields in a Primaris kill team, or maybe have a bunch of eradicators firing off anti-tank fire while having a bunch of intercessors to shield them from harm. I think it's pretty much guaranteed that we would get them as individual units, but I do hope that we get a mixed kill team on top of this. I'm also vaguely hopeful that including new units in Death Watch might actually mean that they finally get the addition of obvious includes throughout 8th edition, such as Phobos units and the Impulsor. The Impulsor basically the standard Primaris transport of the Death Watch, and the Phobos units very much sneaky spec ops Primaris marines, which to my mind really fits in with the Death Watch's whole deal. Gameplay wise, barring the Eradicators, pretty much all of the units favour melee over shooting, which means they might not be quite as strong in Death Watch compared with in other different chapters, but it's not to say that it couldn't have advantages. Being able to set up Blade Guard veterans or Assault Intercessors in the Teleportarium is definitely a viable way of getting them close particularly if they combined with a chaplain litany to get them an extra 2 inch to their charge. Certainly could be a more reliable way of delivering them into close combat than most chapters have access to. We've already seen that the new eradicators with those long range melter rifles are incredibly strong anti-tank at least point for point. Some efficient infantry based anti-tank units are really what Death Watch are missing at the moment. They can pretty easily melt any enemy infantry and hordes with their special issue ammunition, but are just kind of subpar against vehicles, so eradicators could really help plug that gap. Whether they have to be fielded out of deep strike in the teleportarium, or whether they might be able to be combined in a bigger unit to have some other Space Marines tank wounds for them. Either way, I'm sure that this is news that a lot of Death Watch players will welcome. It's good to see that the faction's being thought of with the new releases and updates. Moving on, the rest of the Games Workshop article did talk about the various other rule changes for the Death Watch, namely all the ways that they positively influenced Death Watch in 9th edition. I think in general Death Watch will be gaining more than they lose compared with other armies in 9th, but there aren't to say that there aren't some negatives. Overwatch now being a stratagem is really quite a big deal for them, seeing as they have quite such scary shooting, particularly against hordes. You're less likely to have storm bolters and frag cannons melting quite as many enemy troopers as they try and get in. You're only going to be able to overwatch once a turn, and sometimes it's not even going to be worth it for the command point. The new actions in the missions might not be ideal for the Death Watch either, just because having an elite unit like Death Watch veterans stand around and not do anything for the turn is really something that elite armies can't afford quite as much, and blast weapons might actually be impacting the Death Watch a fair amount as well, as they often like to field 10-man squads, which could be bad news if you're being fired at with things like plasma cannons or plasma exterminators and the like. Being automatically hit by flat 3 shots from these things really isn't going to be nice for elite infantry. Presuming the Death Watch changes follow the Space Marine changes that have been leaked, it looks like Storm Bolters have gone up at least one point, and I suspect it'll be either that or more in the Death Watch Codex, just because of how powerful Storm Bolters are there compared with other guns. The Storm Shield change isn't ideal as well for Death Watch kill team survivability, I'm presuming that this is going to be rolled out to the various other codexes as well, as well as just core Space Marines, and I think that in general having a 2 plus armor save and a 4 plus invul 
is slightly weaker than having a 3 plus invul save, which is just a ridiculously powerful ability. It would make veteran kill teams a little bit more survivable against AP Zero, but considerably less so against anti-elite weapons such as say plasma guns. It could mean that it's a bit more worth just running Storm Shield, Storm Bolter veterans and dispensing with the Terminators that a lot of players usually take at the moment to tank AP Zero shots. Again, it's all going to come down to points cost of the various veterans and their gear. So those are the main negatives that I see, but I think that we also have quite a lot of positives as well. Army construction is a really big one. I think Death Watch armies for the most part are going to be getting more command points than before. You could very easily run a whole Death Watch army in just one single battalion without making too many list design compromises, which isn't something that you can say for a lot of factions. Death Watch, the main strength comes from the troops, and they can happily make do with six or less troops in an entire army. This might get even easier to cram in if everything goes up in points a little bit, meaning that you won't be fielding quite as many Death Watch as before, but everyone else will be fielding less of everything else as well. The frag cannon being on that list of blast weapons is incredibly powerful too. If you do get to fire the random shot version of this gun, that's just going to absolutely destroy hordes. And as it stands to my knowledge, I believe it's the only auto-hitting weapon that also has the blast special rule. 12 automatic strength 6 AP-1 hits is just going to melt things like big units of orcs or chaos cultists into nothing. Short range firepower is also getting a bit of a relative buff in 9th edition, as they did mention in the Warhammer community article. The smaller board just means there's less room for the enemies to run away into, and you're just not going to have to slog quite as far for your footborne infantry with 24 inch ranged weapons to get in range of the very backfield units in the enemy's army. More line of sight blocking terrain could also potentially keep them safe, and squads of elite infantry like Death Watch are just going to be some of the best units for making good use of this terrain. More Necrons in the meta is almost certainly a good thing for Death Watch as well. They favour a lot of infantry and monster units, so you'll be wounding them on 2 plus with Hellfire rounds. Plus they have a few abilities that only trigger against Xenos, and have a stratagem to help counter reanimation protocols, which we do know are changing in some way in 9th edition. Even Mass Storm Boltifier isn't the worst thing in the world when you're shooting at quantum shielding, so it could even help to scythe down some of the vehicles. As we said, more units means more options, so depending how all the points costs unfold, it might well be very viable to run things like, say, Assault Intercessors in a Death Watch army. Even though they're more tailored for combat, those pistols will still be getting the special issue ammunition, I'm sure, so assault and intercessor shooting will be far more scary than in most armies. Finally, things like big guns never tire, allowing moving and shooting for the Corvus Blackstar. It's something that Death Watch players have wanted for quite a long time now, it doesn't really make sense for this thing to be having to choose between firing accurately or flying all over the board. I certainly love this thing to be more efficient in-game, as it's a very cool and thematic model for the Death Watch. Overall, I think that things are boding well at the moment, with new unit options and an update of some sort on the horizon, plus the majority of the 9th edition rules seeming to benefit Death Watch rather than hurting them. If you can think of any other big implications in the rules that I've missed, please let me know down in the comments below, it'd be good to hear your ideas, and any speculation as to how this release is going to go. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, for regular 40k strategy content coming out every day. And if you have been enjoying the channel, I'd just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which is down in the video description below. If you've been watching regularly, then any support is massively appreciated. These videos do take quite a long time to make, and I can only keep on focusing so much time on them with the support of the generous people on Patreon. If you would like to help out, the channel patrons also get to see videos early each week, there's regular polls to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and it gets you guaranteed entry into the Auspets Tactics prize draw each month, where this month we'll be giving away three copies of the Indomitus box. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.